Hello, it's Lawrence Romanowski from Calgary, Canada. I'm shooting from the Lug Nuts facility. And the car behind me here uh, is uh, my own um, 1989 Mercedes 420 SEL. So I think this car kind of has a neat story. Um, I, about 10 years ago, um, well, 11 years ago now, so let me think it would be the, um, I think December of 2012, uh, I was looking, we were, we, my wife and I were pregnant, going to have our first child, and I was looking for um, a kid mobile. We had a, a white 560 SEC uh, Mercedes, and uh, with a child, I wanted, with a baby, I wanted uh, a sedan, of course. Um, so I kind of scoured the internet um, looking for the very best uh, W126 uh, Mercedes sedan that I could find because I wanted my firstborn son to uh, drive in uh, in one of these limos. Um, so that was before bring a trailer and these online auctions and I just went to eBay and, uh, and I found this car in New Jersey uh, and the vendor was a guy named Dean Lumbach who's made a real name for himself uh, in detailing and uh, and is something of an expert on old Mercedes, um, and he writes now for Sports Car Market. So he what what Dean kind of did first is he sort of really elevated the presentation of um, of these cars by detailing the under trays or the undercarriages um, and making the kind of the bottom of the car look kind of just as nice as the top and putting in a lot more better photographs than anybody else was doing. So he started doing that, you know, 10 or 15 years ago. And now it's kind of the standard on bringing a trailer to have undercarriage shots and 250 photographs and so on. So anyway, he he was in located in, in, in New Jersey, I believe. And there's just a great selection of these old luxury cars that just come from wealthy homes. So I got this in on eBay. I think I paid $14,000 for it and it had 33,000 miles. It was like, it looked brand new basically. And uh, we shipped it to Canada. You know, I paid all the duty and shipping and I think it, it wound up standing me about 18,000 Canadian dollars by the, by the time I was done. Okay, and we outfitted it with a kid and uh, uh, then we had another kid and then we had another kid and uh, it, it was our primary, or my wife's primary transportation for probably five years. And then, uh, and then, of course, we just got a minivan, and, and she's, she's had new cars ever since. And since then, I haven't really wanted to get rid of it, but I haven't really, really driven it that much. Uh, I've put about, it's got just under 70,000 70, miles now, so I bought it with 33. So I put 37,000 miles in 10 and a half years on the car. And the last few years, really struggled to kind of drive the car at all. And so... You know, it's you know, it's just time to time to let it go. Um, I, I've done you know, I've done a pretty good job looking after it. I've given it, I think, I think eleven oil changes in the thirty-seven thousand miles that it's been given. So, you know, it gets an average of you know maybe three, four thousand miles a year. And uh, I, you know, I've I've kept up the maintenance and made sure you know the transmission service and some other things that many people don't get to were done you know, spark plugs and wires and distributor cap and stuff like that. Um, so it, uh, it runs really nicely. It's still as sweet to drive as it ever was, still feels indestructible. Um, it's not as pristine as when I bought it. Um, you know, it had five years of driving kids around, uh, although I, it was well protected on the inside, but it's picked up, you know, the odd scratch and mark and so on. And some of the chrome trim has started to oxidize. It will go through all the car, but it's still a, a very fine machine. It's, it's all original paint. Um, it, uh, we had a, a slight rear end collision where the bumper cover was refinished, but uh, it's, never been, it's never been hit. Um, interior is still beautiful, and uh, you know, it's just a nice, straight, honest car that's been, um, been, well, been well maintained. Um, I'll turn the camera around and we'll go through it panel by panel. I'll pick out the imperfections and so on, and uh, you'll get a pretty good idea of, uh, of what it is. But I, you, 
I mean, there's always like no mileage perfect ones somewhere, um, but they're pretty hard to find in this shape. They're pretty hard to find one with original paint. And it's also pretty hard to find one that's had constant regular maintenance. Um, I've also done several videos on this car about maintaining it and other just sort of general interest videos that I'll put a link for. But let's turn the camera around and uh, we'll have a look at this uh, 126 Mercedes in a bit more detail. Okay, so it does have, like I said, original paint, um, but if you get really close up, you know, you can see that it's got all these, these chips have all been touched up. You know, I've made sure they've never been allowed to rust, but you know, if you get within a couple feet of it, you can sort of notice, you know, some of the imperfections. Uh, this is me wet sanding it and going through the paint, unfortunately. Um, so I think it's fair to say that every panel probably has a couple marks on it. Um, passenger front door, you know, every, every panel has got something. Um, but there's nothing that there's nothing that's really rough. And we'll we'll go through it later with a paint meter, and uh, I'll show you that it has original paint. Probably this area here, the rear passenger door has a few um, a few chips larger chips that have been that have been touched up and uh, yeah that one's not very good and I got it with this one everything every other one uh, we've put on okay the windshield I believe is still original and uh, it's showing some pits now the thing about these windshields is they're held in with a rubber seal so they move around a little bit so just because you get a chip doesn't mean you get a crack. A new windshield, you get the slightest little chip in it and it becomes a crack instantly. So even this one, which is invisible when you're in the car, won't actually crack the windshield. But this is, I believe, the original windshield. Okay. The rubber's still good. Um, you know, we've got some oxidation uniform on all the chrome trim now. I haven't tried to polish it. It would probably polish out nice. The... The lights, you can see there, the plastic is starting to yellow a little bit. Um, when my wife was run into at low speed at a traffic light, we repainted the rear, the rear bumper. I think it was refinished. I think I tried to get a new rear bumper, but couldn't. And then we, we painted, we repainted all of the lower part, I think. And uh, that, that actually started to peel in some places and then this, the corner got rubbed again. Okay, so there's, so there's that. Um, yeah, so the, the headlight surrounds and stuff, that's yellowing a little bit. And there's some of the paint on the lower bumpers which is coming off, but the rest of it looks pretty good. Um, rear bumper, and no marks on that. Well, that's a lie. This is a little bit there. Okay. Um, like I said, the chrome trim, the, these cars will start to delaminate. Um, I don't know what that is. Um, they'll start to delaminate and take out the um, heated windscreen. I think that's just a bit of sap there. Uh, and so this one isn't delaminating. So this will dry out, the water gets in there, and then the, the glass delaminates and takes out the electrical wires. So that hasn't happened on this one. Um, They'll also, they'll also start to rust in the bumpers. Um, they'll also start to rust the fast, where the fasteners go to attach the lower body cladding. So we don't see any of that um, uh, uh, at all. Um, you know, e every time, you know, there's a chip and, you know, the, the metal was exposed. I was very quick to, to fill it in um, so that uh, it wouldn't rust, okay? Um, and we'll see underneath the car, there's a little bit of corrosion that started, um, which is a bit of a shame. Um, I've been meaning to sort of get to it and just clean it up a little bit with a wire brush and put some like wax oil coating on it. So if I kept the car, I think I'd do that. But there's nothing that's, there's no softer kind of crunchy metal or anything on the underside. I'll put it up on the hoist and, and, I'll, and I'll show you it up. Okay. Uh, so there's two sets of rims. There's a, this is the OEM 
the uh, OEM summer rim. There's the unused one in the trunk, which is nice. These Michelin tires I bought new about, well, when the car was new. Uh, so they're 10 years old now. They have lots of tread, but, uh, and they don't really, they haven't really started to crack or anything, but, but they're, but they're getting on. It drives fine, but you know, we should probably replace the tires. Uh, okay. So getting in the car, one of the first things I did is I bought these sheepskin covers and, uh, the seats look basically like new underneath. Um, except this bolster, you know, is a tiny bit of wear, but other than that, you know, the, the seats look like brand new. Okay. Um, there's a little bit of cracking starting on the center armrest. The wood in all these cars, uh, starts to crack and this one's no exception. Uh, this switch fell down a little bit. I'm not sure why I haven't bothered to go figure out. I imagine the clip on the reverse side is, uh, is broken. Um, the AC is weak, um, uh, and it hasn't been changed to R134, so it's the old cool or the old uh, refrigerant. So if you want AC, you know you're going to have to tackle that. Um, I don't worry about it too much in Calgary. Um, the dash is uncracked. Uh, it's showing 69, 626 kilometers. The door panels and so on are all nice. The sunroof works. Um, as far as I know, everything, um, everything works. The radio isn't very happy at about minus 15 or 20 degrees Celsius and it quits. And if it's warm, it works fine, but it somehow it just doesn't like being cold. Um, I've got lots of floor mats in the car. Um, you probably shouldn't do this, but I've got three layers of floor mats. There's the, the, original carpets, then there's the, the overlay mats, and then I've got the, uh, I've got the cocoa mats as well. So no, sh no shoe has ever, you know, been on this mat. So I've always really protected that. And the sills still look good. The bottom of the, the doors still look good. Um, I've always covered up the seats. Um, and so no, I don't, nobody's ever sat on that leather because I've always had it, uh, covered up with yoga mats and whatever, whatever I can find before, uh, before the kids got in it. And I've had a child seat in it, but, um, you know, I've always been really careful so that, uh, it, it's been well padded. So it hasn't dug into the, uh, into the leather. Uh, yeah, you can see that. I'm not sure what happened there. Somebody not being very careful. Door panels. Good. Uh, we did manage to Managed to break that somehow, but it still works, it's just chipped on the edge there. Okay, um, door panels look good, all the windows work properly, the sunroof works properly. It doesn't have the rear sunshade like the 560s, or it doesn't have the, uh, the pneumatic um, self leveling rear suspension, which is probably a good thing um, on a used car. The doors all no, there's no car I've ever, I've ever owned or sold or, or experienced that has a door that doors that shut as nicely and solidly as this car. I think when they talk about German build quality and and uh, you know bank vault uh, or doors shutting like a bank vault and stuff, they they're talking about this car. Okay. It has the power antenna and uh, it works. Uh, the climate control uh, unit works fine. Sometimes those give up. Um, the accessory lights and everything work fine. The sunroof uh, works great. And it's a big roof. It makes a, it makes a nice difference in this car. I, re I actually really enjoy it uh, driving with the roof open. Uh, we can look around in the trunk. And again, I've always had this uh, well protected. Got some extra parts here. Some of these are, are for a 300. Um, and then I can show you, sorry about that. Um, I can show you an unused spare and all the original tools and jack and so on. Okay, so that's nice. 
that uh, unused spare is a nice touch. And I've used this, uh, this sunshade to keep the interior cool um, when it has uh, left outside. Okay. okay, so now we bring out the paint meter and we'll just go through the car and measure the paint depth. Um, this um, meter is set up in micrometers, which is one one hundredth of a millimeter. Um, factory paint is around 200 micrometers or 0.2 of a millimeter. Uh, but over 35 years or so, it gets polished down. So let's just see what we have here. Um, and we're looking for consistent depth. If this car was repainted, uh, we would be seeing numbers in the, you know, fours, fives, and sixes. And if there was any filler in it, you know, you'd see, um, you know, you'd see either nothing if there's too much filler or, you know, 1,000 or 2,000 micrometers, which is a couple of millimeters, okay? So I know I've done this car before and uh, every panel has uniform uh, paint depth and so it's all factory paint. Quite unusual for a 1989 German car to have unusual paint, even if, even if it hasn't been hit or scratched. Um, if it's been left out uh, in the sun, the, the paint will start to oxidize and, uh, and crack. And so this one, it's had a pretty good life actually. So let's just go through all the panels. I mean, you'll get, you'll get subtle variations, just the way the paint, um, it's a very sensitive instrument. You get subtle variations just depending on how the paint was laid down. You know, well, obviously it'll flow to some extent. Um, so there'll be places where it's thicker and thinner, even when it was brand new. But that's pretty tight. I'm, I'm trying to think of the last time I've done a meter report, and I mean, the variation is only about, well, I think the lowest reading I got was like a 95, and the highest was a 150 or something like that. So we're, we're talking about paint depth that isn't, uh, that's uniform up to one-tenth of a millimeter on this car. Yeah, you don't want big variations in the roof. That would definitely be a bad thing. Okay, so factory paint on a 1989 Mercedes 420 SCL. And as you can see in the photographs, it, it, it still looks really nice. Um, if you get up close, you know, you can see some of the touched in stone chips and so forth. So, you know, from, from 10 feet, it's perfect. And, but even from one foot, it's still pretty good. And, and again, it's, it's factory original paint. Uh, so, okay, so <clears throat> now we'll put the car on up on the lift and we'll have a look on the under, at the undercarriage. Okay, let's take a look under here. I keep it pretty clean. Um, I just replaced this reservoir, even though I think it was just a $1 O-ring and not a $200 reservoir. The battery's recent. Um, I did the spark plugs and wires and distributor cap and so on those for whatever reason never get done on these cars uh, i did have a little bit of a break in this so i just have some tape on that um i had a the the only time it was i've had two instances where the car was gave me trouble or rather gave me wife my wife trouble one of them was when we first got the car, there was some gelling in, in the fuel lines because I probably hadn't been driven in 10 years. Um, and so that took us a while to figure out because the fuel was blocked by the gelled, by the gelled fuel. 
And, that, and we went through, I think we did injectors and we did a whole bunch of si things in the fuel system to try to cure the problem only to find out we just needed to blow the line out. Um, but that was a little bit frustrating. And then uh, we had this mysterious problem where the car would just die and we went through throwing parts at the car, trying to figure that out, and we figured we'd had it, and then it would die again and couldn't figure it out. Finally, my mechanic let the car idle for eight hours to see what the problem was, and then finally found that the coil was shorting against itself. So we had the coil was a major, uh, major problem, and it was uh, hard to figure out. Anyway, the, the rest of the car is... Uh, is uh, you know, there's really been trouble-free for 10 years, except for those two instances. Other than that, it, it always starts. It always works. You can get in this car anytime and go anywhere. Um, I've never had to worry. Again, those two isolated incidents aside, I've really just never had to worry about this car. Uh, we'll give you the close-up of the data plate. It did have some R134, but not the whole system. It was just put in and I don't know I, can't, I don't know what what the guy did a few pieces but anyway it's mostly leaked out now so that there is a leak in the system I think at the compressor um, so I haven't really bothered to do anything with that um, the hood pad is still intact and uh, I'll start it up for you it, it runs really beautifully um, always with with these Mercedes you know when you start it that you want full oil pressure, it should peg at three bar. Um, if it doesn't, then you've um, uh, got a problem. So we'll just start it up. And so it pegs at, I gotta put some gas in it. It pegs at three bar, which is what it's supposed to do. And uh, if these cars get on in mileage, sometimes they can uh, there's a clacking noise on startup, which is your timing chain tensioner, which can be a serious problem if you don't look after it. Anyway, this one doesn't do that. It, it, there's no unusual noises on startup. And they can be a little bit tappity from the side of the valve covers, uh, but this one isn't. So it, it always is run beautifully. And, um, you know, when I did the valve cover gaskets, I had a look at the camshafts and stuff and it looks like basically brand new. So this engine has experienced very little wear uh, and uh, partly because I, you know, it's, it's always been looked after, okay? And the oil changes have always been really frequent. So um, drivability, cold starts, hot starts, you know, it, 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 it behaves, um, well, behaves perfectly. And it really is a pleasure to drive. Okay, so I've got I've got the air. It's a little bit cool, but it's not it's not really where it should be. Okay. Okay, so now we can do a quick look um, underneath the car. Um, we'll start with the front bumper. Um, it does have some. Uh, you know, light corrosion on some of the metal surfaces, but there is no, there, it's just metal that's brown. There's no actual like flaking or soft metal or rust spots. Um, that being said, if I was gonna keep the car, I would probably um, treat it with a, a rust preventative just to make sure that it, it stabilizes. Um, some of this I think is my own fault because I was an early adopter of cryoblasting and about, I think I did this car around four years ago and um, with a machine that was quite aggressive. And uh, it looked nice when I, when I finished, but I think what it did is it took the protective coating off some of the pieces and then it started to rust quick, quicker than it should. So um, if I knew then what I know now, I would have done the cryoblasting and then I would have given it a rust, uh, like a rust proofing solution. Um, but at the time, I didn't. I just didn't know that. So, we, you know, we have a little bit of you know surface rust on the oil pan. I think I even bought the gasket for this because I was gonna I was gonna take it off and just repaint it. And on some of these um, parts that would have had black paint, 
Uh, we can see a little bit of the paint uh, flaking off, but there's no there's no soft metal. It's just it's just the metal is turned brown. Um, so there's nothing soft in any of these pieces, and all the fasteners, uh, uh, you know, still would come off easily with wrenches. Um, I don't believe there's anything in here that you'd need, you know, a torch and so on to uh, take off. So it is a bit, little bit of corrosion, but it, there's nothing that's uh, structural. And uh, it's not like if you get in here, you're going to have to, you know, uh, use a lot of force or heat to, um, to, to uh, take anything apart. Um, areas like this that if you saw in a photograph, you might think could be hiding some rust they're not it's just not it, it's it's all it's all totally solid so if i was going to keep the car um i think i'd probably spray it with a like a wax oil solution just to stabilize um to stabilize it uh and then you know if we ever did any work in the future i'd just take that opportunity you know if you're whatever dropping the subframe or whatever to clean it up but um, there's uh, certainly no uh, structural or problematic rust in uh, any of the body cavities or any of the sills or floor pans, uh, and they're all they're all good. And the and and the fasteners are all are, are all pretty good. Again, you know these areas where they're exposed, you know we can see a little bit of the paint coming off, um, uh, but there is uh, again nothing. No soft metal at all. And you know, on the backs of the brakes and the bleed nipples and stuff, that, that all still comes off, okay? So, uh, and while we're down here, um, we did the, that muffler, that's that third piece, th I guess this piece is relatively recent and the cats and the front piece are original. Um, it would have had a heat shield up here, but, um, but it, you know, those don't have a very long life. Okay, so that's gone. And uh, I did buy new springs for it because um, I thought I needed them, but I don't. And so they're still in the box. I guess we got a little bit of leak from the rear differential. Um, and the, uh, the brakes on the car are still well over 50%. It's not, it's not uh, I haven't driven it. I think, I think the brakes, I did, I did the brakes on the car maybe 10,000 miles ago, I want to say. It's in the records, which, which I'm uh, providing. All right, so that's my 1989 Mercedes 420 SEL. It really is a lovely car. I've, uh, I must say, it, it, you know, it's, it, it'll be hard to let it go. I've got a lot of good memories with the car, and it's served uh, our family well. And uh, you know, I always, I always felt good about my wife and kid driving around in this because I've had several 126s. Um, with one of my earlier cars, uh, I was hit quite hard um, uh, in the front. Um, in it and I had a black one for about I don't know four or five years I think I put 100,000 kilometers on it and sold it when it had 300,000 kilometers on it it still looked good anyway some guy was on summer tires in some little Japanese car and it was just totally out of control and uh, slid you know just slid it, it didn't even decelerate because his tires were so crappy and whacked into the front of the car and um you know, that car wasn't going, that car had to be towed. It, it, you know, the wheels were splayed. There was cooling all over the road. The fender was dented. The hood was dented. The bumper was, <laughs> the bumper was uh, all caved in and, and that car was just left on the road. And it put a, um, a chip in my front bumper. <laughs> I just heard this, you know, he hit me in the front and there was just this big boom and got out and there's this nothing left of his. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, you know, I, I came to him and, you know, when he was done and I was like, well, you know, I've got this, uh, I've got this chip in the bumper here. And then, um, at another instance with, uh, with that same car where I, if you leave these in neutral, they'll roll. Uh, and I, I left it in neutral and it rolled, um, it rolled down the driveway and into my neighbor's garage. 
and it uh, it hit the corner of the garage and it split a four by four post on the back bumper. And I got there and this post was split and there was like sawdust all over the car. And I heard this really loud crack. And then I just dusted the car off. There was like another bit of paint rubbed off the front bumper and that was it. So when it comes to like, you know, having your kid drive around in it or whatever, I, I always felt quite, uh, uh, you know, quite smug that, smug's not the right word, but quite confident that if anything happened, I'd be glad that, they, that my wife and child were in this car. Okay, so I've, 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 you know, and then I've looked after it and I've cared for it and, you know, I've got, kept all detailed records, files and a spreadsheet on every time I change the oil and I really kind of just enjoyed keeping it up. So it's a good car, it's never been rusted. Um, it's never been, none of the body panels have been, uh, there's no paintwork on it except for touch-ups. And so it's a straight, original, honest car. It's not perfect anymore. Sorry, Dean, it's not perfect. Um, you know, it's got, each panel has got some marks on it. Uh, there's a few, few little things in the interior which are, which are kind of loose or broken. There's the, the switch on the center console, the, the sunroof visor. So sorry, the, the, the sun visor on the passenger side is a little bit loose. The, um, I didn't mention this. This um, door on the rear, uh, or the rear driver's door, that piece has become unthreaded. So I haven't, I haven't, um, I haven't, uh, I need to take that apart and put that back on. So there's a few little things that I haven't done. Um, which I may get to before it's sold. We'll see how much time I have, but they're just minor, minor things. But on the whole, it's just a great, honest, really terrific example of German engineering from the 80s and a, a really well-preserved, well-maintained example. So thank you very much for viewing. Lawrence Romanowski from Calgary, Canada and the Lugnuts facility.